Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for subscribing and also requesting for various topics. I'm going to resume my videos based on the request I received from the various people. Today, I'm going to cover what are the core roles and responsibility of the cloud architect. This was a request I received at least from five people. So hence, I want to just give you the high level glance what are the typical roles and responsibilities are performed by the cloud architect. Before that, if you are new to my channel, I just want to give you a quick glance like what all I usually cover. I usually cover real time based topics, real based type scenarios, real time based uh, interview questions. Everything is based on the real time. You can uh, it's worth to watch the various uh, uh, videos on my channel. In case if you have any request, please pass it to my email ID. Coming back to our uh, topic, today's topic. So what are the basic cloud architect roles and responsibilities? Before I jump into, let us just see what are the key parameters or the areas for a good cloud architecture. This itself, it defines what are the roles and responsibilities of a person as a cloud architect. Coming to the um, key parameters, they are operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization. These are the five key parameters. You have to keep it always in your mind while you are designing your architecture. So how excellent it is going to be during the operations. At the same time, how secure your environment or your migration or your cloud uh, uh, infrastructure is going to be. And how reliable your deployed architecture is going to be. And uh, the performance efficiency and the optimization is the key area of any cloud otherwise you are going to be looted uh, for the consumption of the cloud so moving on to the responsibility is it is very very tough to mention this is a particular responsibility or a role you are going to perform in a certain companies the reason being is like cloud is a ocean there are plenty of things uh, mainly you uh, take it IAS or PAS. So few, few companies have a requirement as a requirement as a pass architect or IAS architect or few companies consider whole as an architect, right? So now for example, infrastructure as a architect or pass as an architect will mainly concentrate how best you can bring your architecture uh, based on the requirement. Now based on the current trend, uh, the more demand is for the multi-cloud architectures and hybrid architectures. So, so as a cloud architect, you have to decide, define, evaluate on what could be best in terms of the cloud deployments. Example, your requirement more demands to have your on-premises server, but at the same time, you want to have some cloud resources for your backups or for the high availability or disaster recoveries. That's kind of combo, right? That's going to be the hybrid architecture. At the same time, you don't want to rely on one particular cloud. Sometimes the resources can be out or the resources, uh, the, the cloud center can be down. So because of various reasons, maybe to save your cost, you want to re utilize few resources from one particular cloud and a few resources from the other cloud. So in these cases, you will define multi-cloud architecture or hybrid architecture, or you may decide to go with the completely pass architecture because your company doesn't believe in having or maintaining the uh, any infrastructure for the deployment so in those cases you have to see what is your priority or your company's priority at the same time you also need to think about what could be best so every approach has its own pros and cons but at the same time you should match for your requirement and understand your organizational goals and the enterprise goals so that's where you will pick the architecture so there are plenty of ways. Again, if you are doing a migration, there is a different type of uh, mechanisms or methodologies you can apply to migrate your on-premises server to the cloud. So the second part is going to be evaluations on cost. As an architect, you need to always evaluate. 
not just a cloud okay you evaluated and you felt aws or azure or gcp as a best uh, uh, cloud provider or cloud vendor but that doesn't end there you should evaluate each and every feature example now i want to host my website or a web service whether i have to go with the application services that means app services or i will have to go with the azure vm or i have to just use a azure function to host my simple web, web method so there are plenty of ways to do that you need to evaluate which is best you need to have a uh, data like how that application is going to perform in next five ten years like what is the traffic you are expecting and what is the dependency on it all these parameters will influence your decision or your evaluation that's where you have to evaluate completely top to bottom and then you need to decide the cost is also on the parameter you need to compare which feature really uh, cost you less uh, so that is where you can prove your architectural skills so the other things you may need to design the failovers you may need to design ha high availability disaster recoveries for your existing architectures or for your new architectures as well the, so you, you assume that your organization already have on premises servers and all are up and running but they don't have any failover mechanism or they don't the current sla is 99.9 9 percentile but moving on they want to have four nines or five nines of the sla so then how do you do that and without having uh, extra on premises server right so then in that case you have to decide or you need to design the architecture to have such kind of failovers high availability and disaster recovery so the other one is like end-to-end -end migration so you may need to design the end-to-end -end, uh, migration model and strategy so there are step-by-step -step approach and i already covered in one of my uh, real-time scenarios please go through that that will help you how usually the uh, migration uh, process will be completed so moving on load balancing so you may need to just decide the load balancing uh, assume that your traffic is going high um, maybe eventually after six months you need to have the pre-plan for that you need to anticipate and take a proactive role on that uh, and design the architecture and be ready or you know you want to balance the load with more servers during the weekends but in the normal days it's a regular traffic so you can bring them down so all these type of things also you may need to architect so as an architect these are the few roles and the security there are plenty of ways and plenty of options available on the cloud to secure your uh, data your uh, environments everything so for each and every resource you should have uh, the well protected uh, infrastructure or well protected uh, security feature uh, for example web application firewall firewall uh, azure defender security center what not uh, you you can we use vnet you can use application service engine there are so many features available which you can uh, leverage from the existing features which are provided by the uh, cloud vendor next one is database so you may have requirement to set up a backend and it could be the existing or it could be a new one right when it is a new one you may need to decide which is the best option for that particular requirement you have uh, relational databases you have NoSQL databases uh, where you have to uh, evaluate best and you have to decide which could be the best option for that particular requirement uh, you have plenty of options amazon dynamo db azure cosmos db sql server whatnot azure sql right so the mongodb you have to take a best call by considering the uh, down the line five ten years and at the same time you also need to consider whether we are really going to use all those features which are going to be provided for by that particular feature okay assume that you decided to go with azure cosmos db but that may not really uh, need may not be really needed to uh, accommodate your features probably simple mysql could be the best option in a few of my projects i have seen the existing uh, applications are using some cassandra or cosmos db where it was not really required but we are ending up paying um, 
lot of lot of money onto that but the that applications uh, were sufficient with mysql or sql server kind of databases and we could have really paid very low in those cases but we somehow you know uh, people felt that cosmos db or cassandra could really do best for that particular requirement so it is becoming expensive right now so you have to think about them which which could be the best option so in similarly backup and archivals you need to architect whether for the new or existing infrastructure you may need to design the backup strategy and also the archival strategy which are the important areas which you always need to cover the other one is monitoring many people doesn't really care about monitoring monitoring is the best one uh, which you need to always cover as part of your architecture in case if the existing infrastructure doesn't have proper monitoring tools you should uh, create them or you should architect and then uh, make sure that that is all deployed onto the cloud so that you know you will have uh, well diagnosed uh, diagnosed tools in place <laughs> similarly you may get sometimes requirement for the iot so you have to be well prepared uh, optimization is a you is your regular job you may need to downscale or upscale and you need to have the best plan in place to uh, save the cost for your organization um, as we all know cloud is a very good option at the same time if you are not really careful you will be looted like anything um, one survey says that uh, unnecessarily people are losing lot of money on the unused resources because of the uh, because of because of lacking of uh, maintenance at the same time devops is other uh, architecture you may need to work on but uh, precisely i can say you can focus on uh, uh, evaluations and cost on picking the right architecture failures hadr backups and archivals load balancing security and end to end migration these are the few areas you have to definitely focus and you need to be well versed on those so that you can uh, get through the interviews i can give you a few examples like uh, or you know the projects types in my next video uh, see you soon